Okay, there we go. This engine seems to run without fuel, without heat, and without any obvious power source. It turns, pumps, and clicks, almost like magic. Recently, videos claiming to showcase a magnet piston engine have gone viral, suggesting that magnets alone can create endless motion. No wires, no combustion, just silent, smooth, perpetual energy. But if you look closely, something feels off. The motion isn't convincing, the force seems suspiciously weak, and the flywheels often need a helping hand. Could this be a breakthrough? Or just another internet illusion dressed up as science? Let's put it to the test and find out. The Viral Claim Lately, videos claiming to show a working magnet piston engine have been spreading fast across the internet. In these clips, creators show what looks like a simple machine, magnets arranged like pistons, a flywheel, and a sleek frame. The setup appears to move on its own, powered only by magnetic force. No wires, no motors, no visible power source, just magnets pushing and pulling, as if they've unlocked a new kind of energy. To many viewers, it feels believable. The flywheel spins, the pistons move rhythmically, and the person in the video steps aside, almost as if saying, see, no tricks. It taps into something deep, our desire for clean, limitless energy. A machine that doesn't need fuel feels like a dream come true. But if you look closer, cracks start to show. Most of these videos begin with someone giving the flywheel a strong push by hand. After that, the machine runs for just a few seconds before slowing down. Sometimes, the camera angles are suspicious. Shadows and reflections hint at possible hidden motors or string mechanisms. And most telling of all, the magnets used are often weak ferrite types that couldn't realistically drive such motion. Despite this, the videos keep going viral. People want to believe. That's why I decided to dig deeper, not by reacting, but by rebuilding one of these engines myself. Understanding Magnetic Repulsion To truly understand whether a magnet piston engine could work, we first need to understand what magnets can and cannot do. Magnets don't create energy. They exert force. Specifically, they attract or repel other magnets or magnetic materials. But that force only exists within a limited distance. Once they're too far apart, that force drops off quickly, almost like it's vanishing into thin air. There are two major types of magnets you'll often see in these DIY engines. One is ferrite, the dark, weak kind you might find in old speakers. The other is neodymium, particularly the powerful N52 grade used in high-performance applications. Neodymium magnets are incredibly strong, sometimes dangerously so, but even they can't generate motion without a little help. That's because magnetic repulsion, no matter how strong, needs perfect alignment, minimal friction, and very close distance to be effective. Another thing people misunderstand is this. Just because magnets repel doesn't mean they can keep pushing forever. Think of them like a spring. You can store energy in a spring and release it, but once it's done, it doesn't keep going. The same goes for magnets. They can push something, sure, but unless that push is constantly renewed by an external input, it stops. That's the physics behind it. But to see what happens when magnets are arranged in piston-like configurations, we need more than theory. We need to build one ourselves. Designing a real test model. To move past theory and speculation, I decided to build my magnet piston engine. Using precisely machined parts and powerful N52 magnets. No tricks, no hidden motors, just a clean, transparent design. The goal was simple. If this concept works, 
it should show consistent motion without any hidden help. I started by designing three separate models. Each would test a different configuration of repulsive force, center repulsion, corner repulsion, and a combination of both. For the build, I used CNC machined aluminum parts for accuracy, two large bearings for the main axle, and four slide bearings to reduce friction in the pistons. The magnets were aligned with careful attention to polarity to ensure the strongest possible repelling effect. Why all this detail? Because in most online videos, the components look handmade or imprecise. Friction is rarely addressed. Magnet orientation is often vague. If you're going to test something that people believe could revolutionize energy, you have to eliminate every possible excuse. This wasn't just about proving whether it works. It was about ruling out all the common justifications used to explain why a model might have failed. I wanted a fair, clean test. Nothing else. Model 1. Center Repulsion Test The first model I built focused on center repulsion. I positioned two powerful N52 magnets facing each other so that their like poles would repel directly along a central axis. The pistons were designed to move linearly between four slide bearings, minimizing friction as much as possible. I kept the magnets close because, as we discussed, distance weakens the force dramatically. Before adding the flywheel, I tested the setup by hand. When I pushed one piston toward the other, the repulsive force was strong and immediate. It felt promising. So I installed the main axle with its two large bearings and attached a lightweight flywheel, just like those seen in the viral videos. Then I stepped back and gave it a spin. It moved briefly. The flywheel turned once or twice, but then it stopped, just like that. I tried again, a bit more forcefully this time. Same result. A short movement, then silence. This wasn't a case of weak magnets or poor construction. Everything was working exactly as it should. The repulsion was there. The alignment was perfect. The friction was minimal. But the system simply couldn't sustain motion. Why? Because there was no energy input. Only resistance. Now first, like always, be sure to hit the like button down below. It helps us out tremendously with the reach of this video. Thank you. Model 2. Center plus Corner Repulsion Test For the second test, I wanted to see if combining multiple repulsion points could generate enough force to create continuous motion. This time, I added two more N52 magnets to the corners of the pistons, creating a system where both center and corner repulsion would act together. The idea was to double the force, more push, more movement. The bearings, frame, and alignment remained the same. I carefully arranged the magnets so that their polarities would maximize repulsion from both the center and the sides. Once again, the pistons slid easily within the guides, and the repulsive force felt even stronger when I tested it by hand. This model looked far more dynamic than the first. The pushback was real. You could feel the tension between the pistons as they resisted each other's presence. I attached the flywheel, balanced it, and gave the system a gentle spin. It moved for a second, maybe two. Then, just like before, it came to a stop. Despite more magnets, more force, and a more complex design, nothing changed. The motion wasn't self-sustaining. The energy still ran out almost immediately. It proved something critical. Adding more magnets doesn't change the fundamental limitation. There's still no power source. Model 3. Corner Repulsion Only For the final test, I simplified the setup. This model used only corner repulsion, no center magnets at all. I arranged four N52 magnets on the top and bottom edges of the pistons so that they would repel at diagonal contact points. The theory was that even with less direct force, a well-balanced system might still create rotational momentum if timed correctly. 
Again, I used slide bearings to minimize friction and ensure smooth movement. The pistons moved freely, and the repulsive force was present, though noticeably weaker than in the previous models. That's expected. When magnets are placed at an angle or offset, the effective repulsion is often diluted. I connected the pistons to the flywheel and gave it a spin. This time, it barely moved. A faint push, a slight turn, then silence. I rechecked the alignment, the polarity, the spacing. Everything was correct. The system simply lacked the power to overcome even the minimal resistance it faced. And this confirmed what the earlier models had already suggested. No matter how you configure the magnets, center, corner, or combined, there's no hidden trick, no secret angle, no magical layout. Without external energy input, the result is always the same. It stops. Why none of them work? After building and testing all three models, the conclusion became crystal clear. The magnet piston engine doesn't work, not because the magnets are weak or the design is flawed, but because the entire concept misunderstands how energy works. Magnets can push and pull, yes, but they don't create energy. They only store and transfer it within a closed system. Every time you see a flywheel spin in those viral videos, it's either been manually started or powered by something hidden. That initial spin gives the illusion of momentum, but there's no continuous force to keep it going. The flywheel just coasts on leftover energy and then slows down. That's basic physics. Friction always wins unless something is feeding energy into the system. In all three of my models, I minimized friction with high-quality bearings and precision CNC machined parts. I used the strongest N52 magnets available. And still, no sustained motion, no power, no miracle. Because magnets, like springs, only give what you first put in. They push and then they stop. They don't recharge themselves. They don't spin engines forever. This isn't about skepticism, it's about science. And science doesn't lie when the evidence is right in front of you. So after all the building, testing, and careful observation, the truth is clear. The magnet piston engine is not a breakthrough. It's a beautifully crafted illusion. What looks like motion without fuel is just motion without context. These devices may spin for a moment, but they rely entirely on hidden forces or initial pushes. There's no secret energy here, just misunderstood physics. It's a reminder that not everything viral is valid, and not every invention is revolutionary. Real progress takes more than magnets and wishful thinking. Thanks for staying with me through the process. I'll see you in the next experiment.